As day breaks over Kapsaror village in Uganda's Kapchorwa district, 5 kilometers from Kapchorwa town, 65 kilometers from Bali in eastern Uganda, a fire is lit in this humble home as a woman prepares breakfast for her family. A seamless flow of activities she carefully goes over before her family awakes. And what ordinarily is her every morning routine, but she is no ordinary woman. I am a housewife. Not only that, I, I am also a primary teacher. I have been teaching for 16 years. Olive Chemutai, a teacher at Chema Primary School in Chema Sub-County, juggles between being a wife, a mother, a teacher, a farmer and leader. On a day like today when she is not at school, her morning is spent feeding and milking her five cows and tilling the three-acre farm filled with coffee fields, bananas, wheat, cassava and vegetables. A path she doesn't regret taking. I remember when I qualified as a teacher, I, I was paid very little money. Then I now thought of what should I do so that I bring up my family. I now started planting coffee, I planted matoke. But farming was not all rosy at the beginning. Uganda's steep slopes and bare land cover that remains susceptible to soil erosion owing to continued deforestation, bringing with it losses with every passing harvest. The land is generally steep. Uh, cultivating on uh, steep slopes uh, pr provides a challenge of uh, uh, preventing soil erosion. Then the other one is uh, that um, because of uh, because of the dense population, we, we the, the, our popula our the population density is quite high. You may find in some places even 400 people per square kilometer. So the land holdings are very small, and uh, some of the farming practices like following cannot be practiced here. I did it the traditional way. In fact, I had got no other knowledge from anybody. Uh, it was very hard for me. Life was somehow difficult. In 2002, she heard of the Kapchorwa Land Care Project out to teach farmers how to properly manage and conserve soil for maximum produce. And since then, when she attended their first training, she has not looked back. The last two years, I was still alone who had adopted these methods. And I, I saw that whatever harvest I had, in fact, everybody was watching. Then there was a day, people just came and stole what was in the garden. They picked coffee, they, they even stole the bunches, and it was everybody's concern. Why, why are you disturbing her? But at least now, when I, I joined hands with my, my friends, the friends in the group, at least when we move round now and move to their homes, they have at least something. Now both her and her husband Joseph Chemisto, lives have been transformed and the results are visible through their farm, now a paradise of both home and commercial foods. We have constructed the permanent house. We have constructed the, the cow shed for the cows. We have constructed the permanent toilet. We pulled water, we brought water home using the same funds. Now even we use some for paying school fees. Her records, father documenting a success that has seen her yearly income increase from 1.95 million Uganda shillings in 2005 to 7.4 million in 2009. Many such stories are told in Kapchorwa district where many farmers have adopted land care management approach. People were poor at the time, they were having grass such houses. When you could count, there were about just two families who had the iron sheet houses. And all the other ones, they were just having grass such houses. But today, uh, as we speak, as we go around, you'll find there is a good house and uh, the standard of living is uh, fair. And success is a song even this ladies in Kululu Parish are also singing about. 
their lushy green farms filled with evidence of their hard work, but especially of their community-based action to produce. Tulikuwa tunapanda ndizi, ndizi ilikuwa kidogo kwa sababu sasa mimi mwenyewe nilikuwa nalima, hata bana jua vile na napea hii ni mbolea, bana jua vile anafanya. Sasa vile tulikutana hii wati atofa walikuja. Wanafundisa sisi unachukua hata samadi, unasanya pamoja unafanya compost, alafu unachukua kwa ndizi. Sasa saa hii ndizi, sisi tunauza ndizi ile kubwa, hata ingina tunakula, ingina tunasomesea hata watoto. Under the Land Care Initiative, farmers plant trees to provide valuable products and services such as firewood and materials for building, plant napier grass along contour lines to regulate soil erosion, engage in fish farming to improve nutrition and production diversification. The land care approach has grown tremendously since the beginning of this pilot project back in 2002 and that continues to receive accolades as more and more community groups such as the Twicat Watershed in Bennett Sub-County in newly created Quen District continue to detail their success and receive more information on how to better their practices. An initiative officials such as Joseph Tenui, the World Agroforestry Center Land Care Coordinator, hopes will be replicated countrywide and regionally to not only transform landscapes by managing massive soil erosion and enhance land conservation, but also help alleviate poverty. What makes land care unique is the kind of collective action and grassroots institutional development that is first developed in order to be able to take the technologies and prioritize them to what is needed at a specific area. However, the success of this approach is pegged on the adoption of the bottom-up management structure that ensures farmers are involved in every decision-making process that directly affects them. To ensure a sustainable process, from the word go, the leadership and the shepherding of the process has got to have the mark of the, of the, of, 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 of the communities themselves. It is very, very important that the government get a buy-in to the process. Secondly, the process of rural development takes into account the traditional aspects of the people and a systematic effort of training and discussions and negotiation support is enabled so that rules are seen by the communities as to belong to the communities. In terms of incentives and punishment, that is agreed at the community level. The government only sanctions it, making sure it's in line with the constitutional order. These are good results. How do we get these results to many more farmers? How do we achieve this over a whole landscape? What answer does land care have on this? We looked at the efforts that different development partners, government extension services, had started working with communities. But we realized that many of these efforts were successful at pilot stages. When projects moved off, uh, the, uh, the whole, when projects moved off, the whole aspect reversed back. The idea was, how do we ensure a sustainable development process? Not at just a small area, but at a landscape level. That meant bringing together the different communities to understand each other and evolve a grassroots institutional development process. And so for Uganda's agricultural progress, the only way is up, as documented by Olive Chemutai and her husband Joseph Chemisto, and various farmer groups which have embraced the land care approach through sustainable land management, soil conservation and securing of their water catchment areas. <laughs>